Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here every Friday. So today we have Kathy Hugo. She's going to talk about uncertainty in medical imaging. Please welcome Kathy. Hi everyone. Uh, well, thanks for the introduction. So I'm actually I'm going to talk about segmentation uncertainty, and I'm an HST PhD student in the quantitative translational imaging and medicine lab, and I'm working with Jay Ashley Kevin Kramer. Um, and so we mostly focus on the development of deep learning tools for image segmentation. And so deep learning image segmentation in a nutshell is what you see on the slide. It's basically what you see in every single talk about segmentation on imaging in general, not just medical imaging. And so what we actually need to, um, to segment something from an image is we have a network. Um, in our case, it's mostly a so-called UNet, but it doesn't really matter what's the name of it. And then that network is fed with an input here with an image of a kitten, and then it produces some sort of an output, but it doesn't really know what it's supposed to segment. So we need to tell it what it has to segment, and that's what we call our ground truth. That's what you see on the far right of this image. And so to actually make the network learn what it's supposed to do, we need to calculate the difference between the output and the ground truth. Um, for that, we use a cost function, and the loss or the, the result of that cost function is then fed back into the network to update the weights. And so this is like an iterative process, how the network actually learns what it's supposed to do. And in the end, we also hope that it's going to generalize. So it's going to give us a meaningful output for images that have not been in the, in the training data set. And so you can do that on cats. And everyone in my lab knows I have a thing for cats. Um, but they're not really in medical imaging. So what we often do is, or what I worked on a bit in the past month is actually segmenting liver from CT images. So then the input is a CT image um, and we work on 3D volumes that just have trouble visualizing 3D on like 2D. So I show you slices. And so you input as like a part of a CT and then the output of the ground truth is kind of like the segmentation of that liver. So actually the information of like where in the, like what voxel is part of the liver and what voxel is not liver. And so the really nice thing about it is it's fast. It's really, really fast. So like mostly it's like below one minute to kind of like get a segmentation. And then you can discuss if that's actually an advantage. It's deterministic. So if you give the network the same input, it will always produce you, this, like usual networks will always produce the same output, not the networks that I'm working with. And so when you talk about it with like many scientists and the deep learning fields, like, oh yeah, segmentation is boring. And yeah, maybe it is in a certain sense it is boring. So you have like, you know, you have the training data set with the ground truth, and then you train the network to predict something. And it is, there are like ways to make it less boring um, in a non-conventional way. And it has a lot to do, for me, it has a lot to do with the way that present the so-called ground truth to the network. Because as you can see on the right side, we present, like the ground truth is a binary mass. So e each voxel is either 100% liver or it's not. But then there's a small problem with that. And it's actually for liver, it's not as challenging, but if you try to segment something like a tumor, it gets much more challenging. And so I actually have a dark past in medicine. I went to medical school before I came here to do my PhD. And I did my internship in radiation oncology. And so I've spent countless hours in a dark basement um, outlining tumors to then um, for treatments plan, treatment plans to be developed on. I actually did this voluntarily because the basement had AC, the rest of the hospital not. And the summers in Heidelberg can get pretty hot. So it was actually, I was like, yeah, I, I love doing that um, <laughs> for various reasons. And so the task is to like find it, first find a tumor and then you got to outline it. And as a medical student, you want to do it as perfectly as possible. So really go through and decide for like basically every single box on every single slide, is this tumor or not? And then you go and present the whole thing to your attending and your attending is like, yeah, hmm, well, this is a little bit too conservative. And then gives you the other outline that you see on the right. And so the question is, who is right? And the answer is like, we don't know, because this is microscopic imaging. You can only decide that on microscopy, what part is actually tumor and what's not. And even on microscopy, it's sometimes really challenging to outline, outline the, the boundaries of a tumor. And this is what we call intervator variability. 
And so you could imagine if you would have like 100 raters, um, and you would get around 100 slightly different answers because we don't know. And, uh, but if you have like these 100 slightly different answers, you could actually calculate something like what's the most likely outline because there's something like, you know, crowd intelligence. And then you could also get something like a confidence interval for that outline. Um, and so, yeah, so this intermediate variability is the question of who's right. The problem is that, as I said, we don't know who is actually right, but we need some ground truth data for our networks. And that's actually why I don't like the term ground truth and what we're working on, because there is no truth or we don't know the truth. Um, so we have some variation in our ground truth. Um, and then we present the network with it, and the network is supposed to figure out what's the absolute truth. Um, but as I said, we don't know. So we need something like a more statistical approach to what our networks are outputting. And so there are two main ways to deal with this, or two main ways to actually work on this um, segmentation uncertainty. Um, uh, in this question, like how can we deal with these ambiguous tasks? Um, the first one is that we actually get something like um, a segmentation hypothesis. And there has been a pretty popular paper last year, actually from Heidelberg, so it's a little bit of like a local patriotism for me. Um, it's called a probabilistic unit for segmentation of ambiguous images. Um, what they actually do is, so they had a training data set where for every single input image, they had four different segmentations. So they had four graders, and you can see there is a lot of variation in these ground truth segmentations. So one grader actually said there's no tumor at all in this image. And then like three different outlines. And so they trained their network to actually give some segmentation hypothesis as variable as possible. And then and they say like in a clinical setting, the MD would be like faced with like these segmentation hypothesis and then should choose the one that's kind of like the most likely. Um, I actually don't think that this is clinically feasible, but maybe it is, maybe it'll prove me wrong. What I'm interested in is getting information about the uncertainty of a model in addition to a most likely segmentation. And so for that, I use something that's called Monte Carlo dropout units. Um, sounds a little bit fancy, it's actually not. It's just like you just have to add like two lines to your like normal unit code and then you get that. Um, and what we can actually do is like every time I feed an input image into this network, it gives me a slightly different answer because it's using a Monte Carlo um, method um, behind, the, behind the scenes. And so you can see on the right hand side, there's my ground truth and then the middle color, like the left, sorry, I have a right left problem, but um, it's kind of quite apparent. So on the left, you see the ground truth and then in the middle, that's the segmentation that I get from my network. And so as I said, for the same network, this is not like for the same input, this network is not no longer deterministic. So if I feed in the same input image, like say like 10 times, then I get 10 slightly different answers. And I can calculate some sort of statistics over these 10 different answers. And then, so for me, so the, the technical information on the right, you can ignore, but so I get kind of like an average over these 10 segmentations. And that's what I call my segmentation. My, my prediction. And then I can also get like a voxel wise information about how certain the network is about its prediction. And so for the segmentations in the middle, green is where the network is right positive, yellow is where it's a little bit too positive, it's where it's false positive. Um, and then the red is where it actually missed something, so false negatively um, classified voxels. Um, the first two rows are liver segmentation and then the second two rows are liver tumor segmentation, which is a little bit more ambiguous than segmenting the liver. Um, and so this is actually really nice because you can see if the network failed with like high certainty or with like failed because like in an area where it was like really, really uncertain. Um, that's good, but it doesn't really make our work easier. So it might give us some more like understanding of how the network is working, but you still have to go into like every single segmentation that the network gives you and then decide if you accept it or not. And so I was looking to get getting like image level information about its uncertainty. And so, yeah, okay. Um, and so I, I looked into like three different measures and it doesn't really matter to you now what these three different measures um, express, but, um, 
on these plots, I have these like uncertainty measures on the y axis and then on the x axis, the segmentation quality. So it's like how well the um, output segmentation overlaps with the actual ground truth of that um, input. And so you can see that especially like the middle and the right. No, actually, especially in the middle and then the other like the, the two on these sides um, as well correlate pretty well with the segmentation quality. And so you could, um, so I have the Spearman correlation coefficients on the bottom. And so you can figure off if we have like a, um, a high throughput research setting. So you just, you have like a thousand livers and you just want to know the volume of these livers because you did some treatment that should like increase or decrease the liver volume or the tumor volume or whatever else you're measuring. And you, then you have your network segmenting the livers and giving you some like number, but you don't want to go through like every single segmentation and say, okay, I accept it. I don't accept it. I need to improve something. It sounds like a lot of work. And then in the end, it might be the same amount of work as if you would do the manual segmentations of all thousand livers yourself. And so, um, because the quality, quality of, the, uh, of the segmentation correlates so well with our uncertainty measures, you could in the next step develop a model that tells you based on these uncertainty measures, um, if a segmentation has a high quality, so you don't need to go back and check, or if it has a low quality, so the network is quite uncertain about it. And these are actually the cases where you have to check yourself. Um, so yeah, well, thank you for listening, for bearing with me and for listening to me. I'm super excited about this project and it's the first time that I'm talking about it. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I want to say thanks for like all these centers on the left, um, the quantitative translational imaging and medicine lab. And um, yeah, my group, uh, we have a lot of fun during Halloween, you can see. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Thanks.